Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about contrast enhanced ultrasound of focal nodular hyperplasia, or FNH. I'm Dr. Dan Koval. This episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The fabulous images that you're about to see were obtained on a Samsung RS85 Prestige ultrasound unit. I'm going to show you examples of FNH on both conventional and contrast enhanced ultrasound, and I'll highlight key teaching points throughout. Here we're looking at transverse and sagittal views of the right hepatic lobe in a middle-aged female patient. And you can see that there is an exophytic mass arising from the liver. It's minimally hypoechoic or darker compared to the liver parenchyma with a faintly echogenic central component. When we had color Doppler imaging, there is some increased linear vascularity at the central aspect. And we can further bring that out with the addition of MV flow imaging, which is a form of microvascular flow imaging that detects slow flow in small caliber vessels. So you can see that there's this stellate central pattern of vascularity. When we look at that on real time imaging, we can see the vascularity pulsing within the central aspect of the lesion with the stellate configuration. And this is typical for focal nodular hyperplasia. So FNH is the second most common benign hepatic tumor. Do you know what the most common is? Yes, hemangioma. And it's most common in women of reproductive age. So we see the highest incidence between the ages of 20 and 50. It can occur in males, but it's much more common in females with a ratio of 8 to 1. And unlike hepatic adenoma, it's not associated with oral contraceptive use. There's also no risk of malignant potential, so no surgery is required for these lesions. We consider them leave alone lesions due to their benignity. And the etiology of FNH is unclear. It's thought to be a regenerative hyperplastic response of normal hepatocytes to an anomalous artery or arteries within the liver. So you can think of it as a hematomatous type lesion that contains a dense collection of functional hepatocytes, but also malformed blind ending biliary ductules, which leads to slowed biliary excretion. And that explains the imaging appearance of FNH on other imaging modalities such as MRI. FNH can also sometimes contain functional Kupfer cells, which are hepatic macrophages. And the ultrasound appearance is variable. FNH can appear hypoechoic or darker than the liver, isoechoic or similar to the liver, and even hyperechoic, brighter than the liver, parenchyma. And here's a different patient with FNH. It's rather subtle, but you can see that it's slightly echogenic compared to the adjacent liver parenchyma. There may be an echogenic central scar to the lesion. And a helpful feature is the identification of the spoke wheel sign of central vascularity. And just like with the last case, that's often better seen with MV flow or microflow imaging, this stellate central pattern of flow. And one study showed that this is seen in up to 63% of FNH. Now, if we look at a third example, you can see this FNH is more hypoechoic compared to the others, but it does have an echogenic central scar with some mild internal vascular flow on color Doppler imaging. When we add MV flow, that stellate or spoke wheel appearance is brought out a bit further, consistent with FNH, and this was confirmed with additional imaging. And just to clarify, MV flow is still part of our conventional ultrasound evaluation. It's extremely helpful, but we can get even more information about a lesion with the use of contrast enhanced ultrasound. So let's now take a look at how contrast ultrasound can help us make the diagnosis of FNH. This was a different patient, a female in her 30s, that presented with an incidental subcapsular left hepatic mass identified on ultrasound. It's rather subtle, slightly hypoechoic relative to the surrounding hepatic parenchyma. On color Doppler imaging, there is some mild internal vascular flow within the central aspect of the lesion. So what we're looking for on contrast enhanced ultrasound in order to make the diagnosis of FNH is a pattern of immediate stellate enhancement radiating from the center of the lesion outward in centrifugal fashion, followed by diffuse homogeneous hyper enhancement relative to the surrounding liver parenchyma. And to identify this stellate or spoke wheel enhancement, it does require some operator skill due to the short, relatively early time window, as you'll see. So here are the initial images from the contrast enhanced ultrasound. On the left-hand side, these are the contrast images where the background is suppressed and everything bright is intravascular contrast enhancement. On the right-hand side, we have the beam mode grayscale image to use as a guide for where the lesion is. And eight seconds after injection, this is in the arterial phase on contrast ultrasound, which is the first 40 seconds. And you can already see that there's this irregular stellate enhancement pattern within this lesion here. Just a second later, we can see that it's extending out further and that continues to spread. Now we see more of a stellate pattern here and we're starting to get hyper enhancement of that surrounding parenchyma. And by 19 seconds, the lesion is completely hyper enhancing relative to the surrounding hepatic parenchyma on real-time imaging. So this time represents the time after contrast injection and saline flush. And notice that stellate central enhancement. 
radiating inside out in centrifugal fashion. By 12 seconds, we already have diffuse homogeneous enhancement, and that persists relative to the surrounding parenchyma. So it enhances very quickly. So again, shortly after the time of injection, just a few seconds after the microbubbles start appearing, we see that inside out spoke wheel stellate enhancement pattern, which is fairly specific for F and H. This image is showing the lesion about three minutes after the time of contrast injection. On contrast ultrasound, this would be the late phase or equilibrium phase, which starts after two minutes. And you can see that the mass remains hyperenhancing relative to the surrounding parenchyma. There's no evidence of washout, which is something we look for on contrast ultrasound, as washout is typically a finding of malignancy, meaning that the lesion will become darker relative to the surrounding parenchyma. And just a reminder, in case you didn't see my hemangioma contrast ultrasound lecture, the agent we use for contrast ultrasound are microbubbles, which are gas-filled microspheres that have either a lipid or a protein shell. And in the example that we just saw, the agent was sulfur hexafluoride lipid type A microspheres, which is an inert gas of six fluoride atoms bound to one sulfur atom, and that's surrounded by a phospholipid shell. And thank you to Dr. Nick Shaheen for providing this excellent diagram. You can follow him on Instagram at Nick H. Shaheen. So what's interesting about these contrast agents is they are similar in size to red blood cells, which makes them larger than the molecular sizes of contrast agents we use for both CT and MRI. So that means they're small enough to cross capillary beds, but then that's where they stay. They're too large to pass beyond them into the interstitium. So they're purely intravascular agents, which makes them ideal for assessing vascularity and perfusion. So that's different than the iodinated contrast we use in CT or the gadolinium we use in MRI. Those agents will cross into the interstitium, and that explains why sometimes things enhance differently on contrast ultrasound than they do on CT and MRI. So some of the advantages of contrast ultrasound compared to other imaging modalities, it has very high contrast resolution, meaning we can actually detect individual micro bubbles and identify a minute amount of flow or enhancement. And that's helpful when you're trying to differentiate debris, for example, from small mural nodules in a cystic neoplasm. Also, the negative predictive value is nearly 100% in excluding flow, meaning if there's no flow detected on contrast ultrasound, it's very likely that there is truly no flow in the lesion. Also, the temporal resolution is very high, meaning that motion artifact is nearly completely eliminated, which can be a problem on CT and especially MRI. So patients that are prone to movement, such as the elderly or debilitated patients, contrast ultrasound may be your imaging modality of choice. And regarding FNH, studies have shown a high specificity in making the diagnosis, up to at least 94% specificity. Okay, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this lecture educational. Thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify or by clicking the YouTube subscribe button. To see bonus material posted throughout the week, follow us on social media. Links are in the show notes or you can click the YouTube posts tab. Until next time, radiology is life. <laughs>